Hello, descendants. Hola, YouTube. Hola, hola. Hello, hello. On today's um, community question and answers answers for the first descendant, um, I went through a little bit of this. I didn't devour it too much, but hopefully we can condense this into an eight to nine minute video where I can um, read off some of the better parts of this community question and answers for the first descendant. Um, Sorry, the bug went in, in my mouth. Uh, uh, sadly, it wasn't you. Here we go, chat. We recently realized that our communication with the community has been lacking, and we would like to apologize for this. Today, we aim to address as many of these suggestions and feedbacks are received from the first descendant, from the descendants throughout our live service so far. Given the large volume and variety of suggestions, there may be some things that, that we have missed or have, haven't covered. However, starting today, we plan to communicate more regularly, sharing our thoughts and updates. We appreciate your patience and some suggestions remain, um, if some suggestions remain unaddressed at this time. Uh, the reason we're sharing these responses throughout the announcement is that the volume and uh, breadth of suggestions make, um, what is this word? Bread? Breath? Wait, is this a typo? Is that the volume and breadth of suggestions can make it challenging to address them all within the limit time, uh, limited time of the broadcast style format? Here we go, chat. They're gonna be addressing combat content equipment and customizations. Um, content, number one. Um, create more content aligned with a, a hack and slash a run and gun styles. More monsters, faster pace, reduced to travel. We're um, developing future content to align with the hack and slash and run and gun styles. Specifically, we've taken feedback regarding the invasion content no, not fitting this approach, and we're working to better these uh, gameplay styles. Uh, improve the invasion content. We're currently focused on developing efforts on new content that aligns with the hack and slash and run and gun direction. So we don't specific um, plans to revamp invasion at this time however as we are expanding our team we'll continue to work on improving um, underutilized or less popular contents along the development of new content more boss patterns improved vis um, invisibility patterns hidden mechanics so far we've been implementing patches to replace some boss patterns with a new ones new bosses will add a new content in season two and we're preparing to introduce new monster types blah 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 farming missions feel too long and tedious we've learned from feedback that the players are enjoying missions with constant monster spawns and the freedom to roam while fighting as a result we've changed a lot of missions in the hard infiltration operation to extra extermination missions we aim to create content with dense combat experiences rather than just fast-paced progression thus allow for hack and slash and run and gun type gameplay we'll also be improving the existing field missions to make um repeated farming more enjoyable improve grappling hook cooldown reduction we believe the purpose of the grappling hook improvement is to enhance character mobility all characters should be able to move with bunny for if better co-op experience currently bunny often arrives first and ends event before other characters can catch up to address this issue we're considering improving the grappling hook or introducing new default mobility skills oh my lord this is what i'm talking about for all you nerds who keep preaching about nerfing bunny suck it it's not about nerfing this or that class. It's about improving the other ones. That should always be the approach to any game when handling balancing. It shouldn't be about nerfing and making things unfun equally. It's about bringing all the other classes to be as fun. It should always be that for any game that you're playing. Never nerf. Always bring them up to the fun character. Remove guided missile patterns. Um... Um, and 1.6 uh, update included patch reduces the performance of guided missiles. Good. Added invisibility effect when rolling. They, people have suggested they wanted iframe when rolling. We currently have no plans for this. Since guided missiles can now be dodged, we believe that invisibility while rolling is less necessary. Rolling is designed to be a quick movement in the direction of the roll to allow players to evade enemy skills. I like this. I don't think they need an iframe. If they do ever decide to visit an iframe, I think it's better to add an iframe for uh, on a cooldown of like maybe five seconds. Um, uh, that way, it still involves some skill and not just mindless rolling around like in um, Souls games. Increase HP, MP. Okay, stop. Delete the comment, Soul Enjoyers. Okay. 
Uh, increased HP and MP recovery outside of combat. Currently, there are uh, ample means to recover HP and MP during combat, and builds are optimized accordingly. We will review for, um, whether further improvements are needed and improved updates um, in the future dev notes. Make it easier to get ammo supplies. We are exploring ways to increase um, a special rounds or will implement... Okay, that's good. Um, improved equipment is swapping during combat. There are some technical challenges associated with suggesting with this suggestion, and we have tried to prevent equipment or module swapping from becoming a part of as a build. However, since players sometimes start with the wrong module setup, we see the need of adjustments. We plan to allow module changes on restarts after missions completions, but not during combat. Great. That is good. Remove collision from uh, between players for smoother movement. This game was designed with collision between character skills, summons, and um, objects, so there are many aspects to review. While we have reviewed this in the past and did not proceed with any changes at the time, but we plan to revisit it in the future. Improved terrain feature that uh, interfere with run and gu gun gameplay. We are uh, continuously ref uh, refining the level design and enhance its quality. Drink. Terrain adjustments, blah, 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 blah. Um, they're going to continue to explore this. Allow shooting while running instead of walking, moving backwards. We believe slowing down movement backwards is appropriate um, and maintaining natural movement. Moving quickly while retreating can make it harder to see, which may load, um, lead to discomfort. Uh, we plan to keep it as uh, is, but we'll reconsider if significant player requests. The early story difficulty is too high. They plan to make it easier, as they already did. Content requiring initial learning should be more detailed. They're planning to give um, special support growth packages um, um, for new players. They're added a feature to disable party effects. We understand the visibility of um, blah, 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 blah. Although it's not the roadmap yet, we will begin discussions immediately due to ongoing optimization issues on some of the after the 400% dungeon update. We will provide further details. So they're going to look into making um, some adjustment to um, visual effects for other players to make it smoother. Good. Improved um, the applied buff. We're working on better ways to identify buffs, and we plan to make improvements as soon as possible. Better descent and weapon balance so far we focus blah 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 player choose a broader range of weapons and descendants so they are obviously still working on balancing the low reward drop rates feel more difficult than they should please improve the farming difficulty now this is something that i already read off stream um they have suggested that they're going to add a pity system finally to the game now this is going to be a bit of a hot take but i think the game is extremely fair with its item drop rates and one of the biggest issue that is plaguing um the game right now is that we have nothing to do if they make things way too easy to grind and they make it a lot easier than what it is right now there's going to be a lot less people playing the fallout is going to be even bigger there is the decrease in players right now in this game is because the game has nothing to chase it has no grind. They give enough, uh, us enough gold, enough Cooper shards, enough of every material possible that the community has bitched about since day one to the point where there is nothing to sink your teeth in later on. There's like nothing to do. And if they, I, 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 this is a hot take. I'm not against the pity system, but we need to, if this is incorporated with a pity system, add something of a chase for players to stay logged in. Because if there is no reason to stay logged in, well, why would we stay logged in? There's nothing for me to do. Like nothing for me to chase. I, it needs to be replaced with something. Give us something that is harder to achieve, some real grit to the game and some grind. Just saying, if everything is so easy, the percentage is going to increase, pity is included, give us something to add to pad this. Um, the over overall story feels short or incomplete. Uh, we plan to expand the main story with each season, and we're increasing our team size to deliver more story content. <laughs> our goal is to provide richer storytelling experience. That's good, chat. They're increasing their size. That's crazy. We'd like to see deeper stories explaining why characters are in the current situation. In season three, we will focus on Glaze's story within the main plot. Oh, season three talks. We've noticed that many players um, resonate more with the personal drama of the Descendants. That's pretty nice, chat. Season three tidbits. Some players want a system where story changes based on their choices. Uh, we don't believe offering choices. Wait, we don't believe offering choices and multiple endings aligns with the direction of the first descendant. 
I agree. I agree. I, I, I don't think we need multiple choices. Let's keep it simple and cute, man. It's about the gameplay. It's about the gameplay. I know that people like story and stuff, but let's keep it short and simple and cute, okay? Um, we'd like to see new characters and abilities added as the current roster lacks a diversity. We are exploring ways to introduce more new characters. As a result, we will introduce two new descendants, one male and one female in season two. Two new descendants in season two? Oh, come on now. New ultimate descendant will also be added. Oh my God, chat. This is so welcomed. Season two is already looking juicy. Adding characters that enable more diverse combat styles, especially combat specializing in range attack support abilities and co-op play. We're working on adding more characters with diverse abilities to offer broader gameplay experience. However, we believe that this also requires more varied content. Currently, the content is divided into two main intercept battles, which involve uh, defeating large bosses and exterminations, which focus on defeating many monsters. As a result, character characters optimized for two content types are highlighted. We think it's necessary to diversify the types of content to allow for a wider range of character choices at the same time we are carefully testing new content to avoid creating an environment where new characters feel required um as a choice for new uh, for this content okay okay as soon as the new content is ready we'll seek player feedback through focus group test i i welcome this oh these are my devs chat and the pa devs two of my favorite korean devs current den uh, dungeons are repetitive and lack new challenges and enemy types uh true we need dungeons that are more challenging the dungeons in season two will require will feature new types of monsters we also recognize that need more for more challenging and in-game content so we're preparing a range of in-game experiences for season two this include adding higher difficulty for special operations and intercept battles and we're uh as well as content that gradually increases in difficult uh to the challenge th throughout stages we're hoping to continue and expand the range of in-game experiences that's good we need um large monsters currently there are only small ones we'll take an idea of large world based mobs weak points into consideration as this custom and relevant departments we recognize the perception of l a lack of large monsters missions and dungeons um, constraints to address this we plan to create a new fields that provide field combat experience with large monsters the boss attack patterns and combat cells are somewhat monotonous we're striving to balance the team we believe the dust stalker update aligned well with this goal going forward we'll continue updating intercept battles by adding new patterns ensuring that both uh, intuitive and strategic strategically fair we'd like to see a stronger emphasis on importance of co-op in dungeons we understand that there's a mixed feelings about emphasis on co-op at play dungeons and the first descendant are designed to be played soloable solo with the option for smoother and faster progress in a group we intend to maintain this approach while enhancing co-op synergy which we believe should be support by player abilities and con content difficulty currently the lower difficulty of content may make the need for co-op less apparent but as we introduce more challenging in-game content we anticipate that the demand for co-op play will grow naturally i like that i like that they're sticking to the vision of being solo focused but an option to play co-op to make things easier i like this this is pretty nice they're still sticking to their guns of making content not forced on a player i like options um yeah that that's pretty nice i'm okay with that uh improve the structure of amor's outpost farming methods we agree that farming blah 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 blah. we recognize that the current outpost uh route is less engaging so they're going to do a little bit of uh, changing there we will thoroughly review all options to ensure positive changes for everyone uh actively considering the ideas of player share with us remove unreasonable penalties for content weapons modules inversion etc we receive consider feedback regarding uh, penalties on invasion and inversion reinforcement in similar areas currently we are not considering penalties when designing new content instead we aim to provide attribute bonuses to encourage a wider variety of character use oh my god that is so good penalties are so dumb it's not fun if you're giving 20 percent mobility speed but you die to a fart in the wind give us modules that have no negative effects 
give us things that are fun don't uh don't nerf the fun by adding some stupid monotonous uh, tacked on negative effect they're never fun in any game please consider um accessibility options for visually and hearing impaired players um uh, we moving forward. We are committed to gradually introducing more accessibility. That's good. Um, very engaging. The events that have it held are currently ongoing aren't very engaging, and the rewards sufficient to encourage engagement. Um, yeah, the daily content is not really fun. It's not really exciting. During periods without major updates, we'll continue to support gameplay through events, establishing them as a key content feature. Okay. Well, hopefully they make them a little bit more varied and great because the current ones aren't that great um maybe introduce some cosmetics that way people log in more people are not going to log in necessarily for an energy activator uh people aren't going to really necessarily log in for um a crystallization catalyst people will log in for cosmetic features people will log in for pets backpacks cosmetics hairs dyes i don't know about dyes that much but uh, people will log in for stuff like that way more than the other stuff that they can grind for in the game stuff that can be grinded in the game i feel like people wouldn't necessarily log in daily for that sort of stuff uh we like to see special rewards like character skins we've always um carefully considered event structures and rewards as previously mentioned we are planning to introduce new features and along with growth items materials currency rewards we're exploring their options to include character skins to enhance the motivation and satisfaction ideally these skins will align with the season's theme and we're looking into ways for players to earn them simply through event participation and gameplay that's what i'm talking about skins uh listen up pa as well people will log in for cosmetics that are free in the game attach a cosmetic that you can grind in every grind spot and put them kill ten thousand of this certain monster to unlock this skin i guarantee you people will log in and kill ten thousand one billion monsters of a certain type to get that skin attach skins and cosmetics to your games to your grindy games it's another chase in your games i've always said this from the very beginning when shy started getting exclusive contents in black desert online i've always suggested hey how about adding a, a quest that you kill a million um, desert nagas and you get to transform into a desert naga either a skin something tangible included in the game people people like that shit man um let's see and if you're if you're, you're too worried that you'll lose money hey make the make a, a, a duplicate of it and sell it and the duplicate version has a cool glow to it you know there you go problem solved two skins one free for grinding and one uh that has a, 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 an aura around it that glows or some different something we would like to um, add, um, let's see, uh, there's a lack of incentives obtained. Um, additionally, we'll continue to add ultimate weapons with interesting stat and effects to make them more worthwhile to collect. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, zooming in on firearms. Um, uh, secondary options on reactors currently we don't support a readjusting since reactors only have two options um we consider consider increasing the reactor option okay okay we would like to add crafting or rare reactors better build variety reactor implanted system 1.6 will take care of that um let's see chat sorry i'm skipping through this the patch notes will be linked in the description down below or the q a if you guys want to continue reading this at your own pace i will be linking that down below um add more ways to equip modules they already said they did that increase the performance dedicated to transcendent modules um they're reviewing the process um some of them are underutilized and they will be making adjustments add a feature to delete modules from the inventory um currently it has been um let's see add a combined module we plan to include it in a hot fix as soon as possible um 
UI customization. Currently, customization options for characters are limited. We'd like to see some sort of uh, options for appearance and elements. Hope we um, have a wider selection of hairstyles such as long, short, and unique styles as we are more as more options for overall customizations. We know that players have a strong desire for customizations. Our internal data shows particularly high demand for appearances options like hairstyles. So we've decided to expand our art team capacity to produce more of them. We'll also continue to review and steadily introduce a wider range of customization options. Allow us to, to dye the default character appearance. We listen to your request and with the start of season two, both descendant and ultimate descendant default appearances will be dyeable. We also apologize for the delay in implementing this highly requested feature. Additionally, as noted in previous updates, update notes, dedicated spawns and back attachments will be shared in items starting season two. Oh my God, let's put this another short for this one. More variety. And at Pearl Abyss, you can listen to this one too because this is important for your game. The limited selection of skins makes it hard to customize as desired. Release more skins with both casual and unique themes. That's right. Our data shows that skins with a wide variety of themes are very popular. In response, we're expanding our team to create skins with more themes and in greater quantities. We would appreciate your pen, uh, patience as we worked on this. Okay, maybe not that one. That was not the one. There's another one, a note that's coming up soon that I really liked. Uh, adjust the Twisted Workshop customization. We have actively taken suggestions on board on implementing it in 1030 update. We've added a redesigned body skin to the existing product and a new purchases will receive the original updates. Revised version will also be sent to via mail. Oh, this one. This is the one, chat. This is the one. This one is really good. We just want to buy skins without bundled packages. It feels excessive. The prices for skins, enhancements, materials are too high. We listen to your feedback and the team and business units have agreed to sell all cosmetic items, skins, spawns, back attachments, chest attachments, etc., sold separately. These polic uh, this policy will go into effect with the start of season two. It also reviewing enhanced materials, materials to make them more efficient when purchasing. That's what I'm talking about. When, when I tell you, chat, that this development team, Magnum Studios at Nexon, is the fucking GOAT. It is the GOAT, bro. They listen. They are separating all the bundle stuff that costed players up to $100 if you don't want to grind out the rest um, with all the extra stuff in there. And the only way to get those extra stuff was to buy the bundle that could cost you $60 to $100. Well, not anymore. Now you'll be able to purchase them separately starting on season two. That's huge. And, and I know this is going to hurt their wallet, but I think this is overall healthier for the game. Yeah, and I, I, I think it's really, really nice. Can they make an MMO? I mean, dude, this company is like, I'm telling you, I'm a shill. I'm a simp. Uh, are we, uh, are there any plans to sell retired skins again, or are they truly off the market? Many players have requested the sale of retired skins. While we are carefully considering changes to the store display for regular sales, we decided in coordination with the dev team and our business team to change our policy for upcoming skins to be available for regular sell. No more FOMO chat. Is that, does this mean no more FOMO? Except for certain seasonal event skins. For former skins, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is like Halloween or Christmas themed stuff, right? For Christmas, Halloween, 4th of July or whatever, they are probably planning to not put those out year round. But let me continue reaming, reading. Rimming. For former skins, we plan to add previously retired Ultimate Descendant skins as individual items. As for the other skins, we are carefully reviewing our options. I don't think it's too bad to keep seasonal skins as seasonal skins. It kind of makes sense that during Christmas, you sell Christmas stuff and then you throw it, you put it away, like in real life, right? In IRL, when you go to a store in, uh, in July, you're not going to see Christmas stuff at your grocery store. You know, so I think it's, I think it's fair to uh, expect 
for an October skin to not be sold during July. Um, but it would be nice though, that if October rolls again, that they do incorporate the October skins again, like your Halloween skins. That makes sense. Like per Perla Biz does, you know, Perla Biz does a really good job at reintroducing some of their older skins. That is good. Um, uh, add the ability to use surplus materials to craft and more some materials. Um, we'll continue adding new systems to make use of surplus materials. Similar to how ETA Zero provides an opportunity to exchange surplus blueprints for other items, our plan is to support utilizing support materials, currency, and other resources. Server lag and optimization, targeted systems, um, all of this is addressed, chat. Add system or space displayed own descendants like a figurines. Ooh. Add a system or space to display owned descendants, like a housing, you know, or something like in your main hub. We think it's a great idea, similar to suggestions have come up internally, though we don't have a specific plan. However, it's under consideration as a medium to long-term project. Add a photo mode. Oh my God, the coomers will go crazy. We'd love to add this feature internally as well, but it's difficult to say when it might be feasible. We'll review it further. Okay, Chad. Okay, okay, okay. We're in, okay. Closing the letter. We're interested to hear your thoughts on the dev team's responses. For any questions we've current couldn't answer today, we plan to answer in the new Q and A channel on our official Discord next week. The team is currently hard at work at season two, scheduled for release on December fifth. Drawing from our experience with season one update, we want to ensure uh, to gather ample player feedback to refine the content ahead of new updates. As part of this plan, we'll be conducting FGT uh, focus group tests specifically for season two content. We'll be sharing details on Discord. Discord, inviting players to preview the season content blah 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 uh, hey next on you know where to reach me you know where to reach me i'll sign any nda i'll i'll be there okay and tell me what did you guys think over on the youtube um did you like this because i think this is great i wish it would be better if it was live you know maybe uh, gather some good um players streamers moxie you know glad um you know some uh, ellie you know to do a weekly reviews and read the, the loud the patch notes and they do exclusive drops you know or or something to bring com uh community uh player feedback but anyways what you guys think what you guys think leave it down in the comments below not so fast hit that subscription button before you head out how about that